So, hello everybody and welcome to our webinar concerning correct installation of Fronius inverters. Very welcome to this one. I would like to start with the question if you can hear my voice properly. Please, can you give, do me a favor and give me a hand sign if you can hear my voice? That would be good to know about if everything is working properly. Can you can you please click on on the button where where the hand sign is and give me a feedback that you can hear my voice? Okay, right now I don't don't get any responses. So please, everybody, can you click on the link um, in order to make sure that you can hear my voice? Can you hear me? Hello? So let's start with the webinar concerning how to install Fronius inverters correctly. So during this 45 minutes, I would like to show you the possibilities Fronius gives and uh, the type of tips and documentations uh, which you will get from Fronius when you receive the, the packages and what you can also um, receive by uh, website or digital um, support. So I will show that step by step. Thanks for a lot for tuning in on this beautiful day. I think um, you also have got good PV productions today. So we can start with this webinar. I myself, Eddie Ufkes, Edsat Ufkes, working in the uh, Fronis Solar Energy Department. I'm the trainer and doing practical trainings here in Austria. Um, yeah, concerning products, concerning um, inverters, and all of that, as well as doing webinars. Um, so, welcome from my side to this webinar here. The content will be, we will look briefly into this documentation we are providing for you out there and um, which kind of media are we providing besides that, uh, online media and help and tips for doing proper installations. As well, we will also through, go through all these tips and steps, step by step, um, in order to have a nice proper snap inverter installation. We will look into the wall bracket installation and how to connect the, the um, screw terminal, the cables to the screw terminal, and we will talk about some specific things which is coming into place with Fronius. So I have got a small question for you guys out there. Um, please give me your, your feedback if you, um, what background you have. So I would like to start this small poll. I hope you can see this now. Should be possible? Yes. Okay. Um, can you please click on the screen and tell me, are you an interested end customer? Or maybe you are an, an installer with uh, no Fronius experience at all. So you don't have got any installations with Fronius so far. Or maybe you are an installer which has got already Fronius experience. So it would be also good to know to have this result. Or maybe you are, are an FSP. Okay, I will wait a while so that I'm sure that you all have given me your answers. So you will still have got the time now to click on the screen to tell me who you are. Okay, thanks a lot. And I will show you also the result. And we don't have got any um, FS FSPs here. We just have only um, interest, interested end customers and also Fronius, uh, um, yeah, inst installers with Fronius, no Fronius uh, experience at all. Thanks a lot for that one. Okay, so I can proceed with my presentation and it's good for us to know in order to focus with our presentation. Yes, um, let's go through the topics. Um, documents for inverter installation. As all of our um, snap inverters have um, two 
existing components, um, the wall bracket and also the um, inverter itself. There are some specifications from Fronius which we would like to show you. Um, you can find all these informations in our documents which we provide under this link here. And especially you can here now see the link uh, with the QR code. You can scan this QR code and you find all these QR codes even on the package of the uh, of your inverter which you're receiving on the customer side or even um, in the instruction on the instruction manual which comes with the package so there you can directly go online and look into our documentations we are separating between installations instructions and operation manuals so as the word says already, installation instructions, of course, you will get the manual for doing a proper installation, which we are going through this webinar here as well. And um, on the other hand, there are the operation manuals, which you need when you are running the inverters and you would like to make some adaptions or uh, doing some communication or external uh, devices to this then you need the operation manuals. This is the principal um, separation of that. And of course, we are also providing more and more videos on our YouTube channel um, concerning installation, concerning setting up things, like the data manager, for example, is available there, um, or how to do a proper installation as well. And yeah, maybe you have already a um, Fronius energy package or maybe you war you you want to um, install one soon then you can also check out our video online which we provide you there so we will explain that every step by step and of course the webinars which we are doing right now and especially the trainings that is very um, special of course that we have got a chapter in our FSP trainings for example and our other product um, trainings where we show you step by step how to install Fronius inverters yeah, these are our available videos. I can show you online as well, which you can find there. For example, the snap inverter technology uh, animation where you can see our um, um, compartment concept where our wall bracket is existing and also the uh, Fronis inverter itself is snapped in. That's why the name is coming from snap inverter, which you have to do um, step by step and the DC breaker as well as the communication uh, the the screw terminals there so you can look into our YouTube channel by just entering Fronius Solar in the YouTube uh, search um, bar here and then come to our channel as well we have some special uh, information yeah like in this example for the US inverters or in other countries there you can also find some special installation videos in there or even as I already said the data manager setup uh, and commissioning vis uh, video that's also available also I can tell you that you can on our homepage of course can directly look in our download search um, and look up for uh, installation manuals there for example I'm looking for the Simo and you will get an, an result list, of course, with all available documents here in, yeah, depending on the language you prefer, you can filter that as well. So you can find easily all our information online as well. In general, all of our inverters, as I said, they have got this unique um, inverter housing, like it's called a snap inverter. And these are the bigger ones and these are the smaller ones, depending on the um, output uh, yeah, size, depending on the, um, yeah, the output on, on this inverter, you can select between the small ones and the big ones. So in general, these inverters are all designed the same. And that's for a good reason. It is because for easy installation and as well for easy service. That's very unique and um, we have these, like you can see here, the, the, the display and also the installation area down here, which is always the same. So it doesn't matter which type of model you have um, 
and also in which country you are, maybe one phase or three phase devices, um, they are all the same design and also easy to, to insta install and also to, to service. Let's look into the specifications and the recommendations we give you to install and this is what you find also in our documentation here. Um, in our documentation, as I said, we have two different ones. We have here the installation manual. Sorry, that's the other one. This is the installation manual. This always comes with the package. You will find this as a picture-based guideline where you can look through on site how to install a Fronis inverter, how to connect the PV system, how to measure everything. This is all explained by pictures. So very basic and it's a small booklet which comes in the package. And uh, here you find all necessary information inside. If you need more specific information, you can download the other one. This is the manual then. And um, here you go. Um, you can also find this uh, on the download area in this webinar um, software. On the right-hand side, you can download these PDFs right now, so during the session here. Um, I've provided these documents for you there, so you can see the difference as well. Yeah. So here we will be in detail explained which cables do you need to, to use, how to install it, Yeah. What what adaptions do you have to make in the switchboard, um, the RCMUs you have to take, for example, and all that, yeah, really in detail explained. So please be invited to download that right now in the download section here in this webinar. Let's go back to my present presentation. So here we go. And yeah. Now we are looking into the specifications for the uh, installations, what you have to take into consideration. So first of all, our inverters are easy to install. That's for sure. And they are most of them, the small ones, they are coming at least with the IP, IP protection class IP65. So the smaller ones with the small housing, with uh, the output power range up to 8 kilowatts, they have got uh, IP protection class 65. And the bigger ones for the commercial use, they are coming with output power classes up to 20 kilowatts or even 25, 27 when we're talking about the echo inverter. These have got IP protection class 66 even, so even more. Basically, IP protection class means you can basically install them everywhere. But let's specify the protection class a little bit more precisely. What does it mean? Um, IP protection means protected against moisture, against water, in terms of rain. Uh, it uh, protects against dust. So this is, first of all, the specification here. So our inverter can handle with water and also with dust because we have got a um, hermetically sealed um, um, uh, cooling system. So no outside air is coming into in, in touch with the inside electronics. So that's the good thing about it. Um, that means also that you can, of course, install these inverters inside. That's for sure. And also outside but not directly into direct sunlight. Here we have got explained the, on the icons um, taken from the installation manual what it means. So IT protection class 65, you can install your inverter inside of buildings and also outside because it's protected against um, uh, water. And, um, but it doesn't mean that it is protected against direct heating. So that means in terms of sun irradiation yeah so our inverters are not allowed to be put in direct sun and this is very important to understand this because um, direct sun means increase of temperature um, inside of the inverter because of the direct sun and it can also harm the inverter display because of the infrared um, rays and also um, because of the direct sun um, we have got different uh, temperature coefficient of these materials of the inverter, especially aluminium housing and 
the uh, bottom area is made of um, is synthetic, so that's obvious that they have got a different uh, temperature coefficients. That means it can it can deform when they are in direct sun. And to avoid this, we recommend to put them at least under a shelter so that they are shaded. Yeah. Even if you have don't have got the inverters inside of a building, probably on a uh, project site with a commercial uh, installation, uh, then at least uh, put these under inverters underneath the modules on the pole of the module um, uh, rack, or maybe you have got a shelter which uh, uh, has got shading for the for the inverter. So that's very important to understand. Our inverters can also be installed uh, on different sea levels up to 200, 2,500 meters. Uh, that's okay, and even under limited circumstances up to 3,400 meters. So basically, that's okay. Um, they shouldn't be installed in direct um, industrial areas where you handle with acids and um, chemicals. Um, please try to avoid this. Not di no direct harm of by chemicals or acids. Also, please don't put them in your living room or in your sleeping room because that is more a recommendation from our side in terms of the noise the inverter is um, uh, causing when it's heating up and the uh, fans are running. This is um, not something which I would or somebody would like to have in his sleeping room, of course. Then also in direct area of the livestock of animals, please don't put the inverters there um, because of ammoniac and other um, dusty um, things which can happen to these inverters. Please try to avoid this as well as in glass housings like um, for your gardening areas because of the temperature. This is not something which we definitely can, can't recommend to put the inverter there. Please try to avoid this. Okay, everything else is fine. And here we go with the orientation with the inverter. First of all here, um, normal air yeah, installation on the wall upside uh, is okay. And then um, here we have got the other pictures which are okay with our inverter. Even, even directly uh, horizontal uh, installation is okay with our inverters. Not upside down. This is not very good for the inverter and also for uh, the heat. Yeah, the heat would then the heat outlet of the inverter would is here on top of the inverter. If you hang them upside down, then of course the air flows into uh, on top and could get sucked in into the inverter again. So this is something which we definitely can't recommend. So please try to avoid this. And also for installation work and service work, this is something which is not very usable because you can't uh, hang in the inverter into the wall bracket if it's upside down. So on the other hand, it doesn't really make sense to hang up the inverter upside down. So I think that's, that should be clear, of course. But also to be precise here in this webinar, um, we definitely recommend to avoid these installations. Yeah, when it comes to installation work and uh, opening up the housing and everything, we can um, definitely recommend these uh, talk tools. Like this is just an example of a manufacturer. You find different ones out there um, in your area. And our talk is recommended between 1.5 if you're, especially if you're doing um, uh, internal exchange of the components, for example, or even on the screw terminal. Then you have got a little less torque, um, and uh, with the housing itself, you can ha have a higher torque as well, like around two or even a little bit higher. I can recommend to put that torque to around two, and then you're on the safe side. So nothing will happen even to the inside components as well as on the housing as well. Yeah. So if you're using these kind of tools, uh, tools you can use these ones here with um, adjustable torque. There are also electrical ones with electric, uh, with adjustable torque. And uh, please don't use any tools at all which don't have got any adjustable torque. So because it can harm the housing, it can harm the winding of the screw terminals. And this is definitely something which we 
uh, can't recommend. Yeah, this is how our inverter looks like. It exists of a wall bracket and also the inverter itself. It comes in the in, in inverter housing, which looks like this one here on the right hand side. And when you are done with the installation work on the wall and uh, have installed all the cables and, and everything, when you're done with all this, then you put in the inverter into the wall bracket, snap it in, put two more screws inside in order that you have got proper connection between the inverter and the wall bracket. And then you can turn the DC breaker on on and your inverter is safe, up and running. I ex will explain this step by step during the next slides, how to handle this. So you can take out the inverter by loosening these two screws here. So we are looking into the small range of power classes of our inverters. Then you have got here uh, two screws on side as well as the bigger ones here as well. Uh, take out the two screws and then you're able to take off the inverter off of the wall bracket. If you're using the heavy ones, like the big SIMO classes, 15 or up to 20 uh, kilowatt of output power, or even the Echo with 25, 27, uh, these are a little bit more heavy. Um, you should at least be two persons to take out the inverter out of the wall bracket and also to install this, uh, put back the inverter into the wall bracket as well. Because the SIMO, for example, it weighs 43 kilograms, and the echo inverters they're waiting uh, for 35 kilograms. Um, so definitely too much for one person. Um, even though they are way lighter than other manufacturers, uh, this is something which we, um, yeah, which is very nice because especially when you are on remote places, it is definitely makes a difference if you have got a high weight inverter or even a lighter one. So the Fronius inverters are really good um, in this purpose. Take out the two screws ex as explained, and then you have got this wall breakage which you can then adjust to the wall or to the under to the background. And with the small housings, we are recommending to put here two screws on top and one on the bottom. If you have got a big housing like the Echo or the Simon with the big power classes then please put two screws on the top row and two screws as well on the bottom row. So four screws with the big housings and three screws with the small housings. Then you're good to go. It's a good, good installation and the wall bracket is safe in order not to fall off. Yeah, this is the wall bracket here. And um, these are existing out with uh, different wall lashes or lashes, which you can use for the screwing on the wall. And uh, even with uneven um, surroundings or walls, you can uh, correct that by these uh, adjustable lashes. These holes here are not mounting uh, holes. Please don't use that this for putting the screws in. Yeah, and then we have got some some other features on it, like for metal springs for e EMC, which is then um, responsible for the connection with the inverter. And also you have got there the water outlet um, of the inverter. If water should run from the top uh, into the inverter, it will run off here. So it never gets in touch with the electronical parts. Yeah, the wall breaker this um, has to be hang up with three screws at least and please make sure that you have got uh, that is even on the wall and with the big ones with four screws as I said and here we go with another uh, it comes with the inverter package as well with your installation manual you will have got um, yeah um, this um, drawing here which you can use and just put on the wall and then you can directly go and drill the holes without measuring. Yeah. So this will also be with the installation. If you have got maybe a pole um, underneath the modules or somewhere else where you would like to put the inverter to, then you can use this pole mount bracket. Um, this pole mount kit is called by the company called Rital. Rital um, from Germany. Um, here you have got the order number as well from them. 
please yeah you don't have to mind to write this down now because we will send out this presentation as well as always to you by tomorrow and um, so no don't mind it you will get this information as well yeah with this you can then put this bar on the inverter do we have got the wall bracket here no um on top and on the bottom and then you can use this metal band here for the installation a proper installation on the wall yeah then we have got here on the back side of the inverter itself the connection areas um, for the um, for the power transmission from the wall bracket to the inverter and here we have got the DC side and we have got the AC side here so these are the contacts which are yeah coming into uh, place when you put in the inverter into the wall bracket and this is the critical point because if you don't mount the inverter probably to the wall bracket by the two screws I just showed you then it can happen that it's not uh, probably sealed this context and it's getting hot there and this is something which we definitely don't want and you should avoid so uh, otherwise it can get really hot, really hot there and can melt down yeah these are the AC and the DC connectors as I just explained here uh, with the heating bridges then we have got another thing this is the DC breaker so in every of our wall brackets down there you find this uh, DC breaker on the connection area and this is the mm, bright uh, bolt here which goes inside even though this bracket can be exchanged uh, it's a Fronius uh, has got a Fronius article number so maybe if you have got problems with the DC breaker or the brakes maybe at for example at the Turing installation where it can be exchanged as well so this is an oval um, oval shaped um, uh, pin um, shaft here and uh, this goes to the inverter backside you can see that here you see this metal plate down there so this is going into the wall bracket and here into the oval oval shift um, DC breaker so that means the the inverter can't be taken out of the wall bracket when the DC breaker is on on mode yeah this is very very important to understand so always turn on off before you take out the inverter yeah this is for security reasons of course we uh, to disable and to switch off the screw terminals from power lines that needs to be disabled that's why of course you should switch off the dc breaker first yeah this is the connection area by more a little bit more in detail a little better to see here we've got dc breaker the oval um, the bar and then we've got here the DC terminals uh, the tulip contacts when it, where the uh, power transmission happens to the inverter and here on the right hand side we have got the AC tulip contacts where the inverter is putting its transformed DC power to also what's important here we can definitely of course it is the screw terminal connect the DC cables and the AC cables directly here so it depends if you have got an, uh, a model with one MPP tracker or with two MPP trackers that will be split it um, and the DC minus area is bridged here so you have got three two connection areas for your strings on the plus side and one on the minus side this is where your cables go for the PV generator on the AC side we have got here the other bar where we can connect the, your three-phase um, grid to this AC terminal also what's important is the strain relief down here so please make sure that you always demount the strain, strain relief, relief before you connect the cables and don't forget to put it back this is very, also very important because it happens sometimes mm -hmm installers forget to put back the strain relief and it is there there for one reason it is there for 
um, yeah, that your cables can't get loose. So should be should be a put back here to the screw terminal. Okay, everything else is not really important. Um, let's look into the connection of cables to this um, uh, connection terminal. Uh, on the DC side, you can break these knockouts on the inverter housing, and then there are some um, uh, synthetic uh, sealers, which you can also um, break through with your cable and wire your DC side here to the left-hand side of the screw terminal. Put back the strain relief, as I just explained. Very important also to have the strain relief mounted. And please note the according um, torque here on the screws with the terminal. This is also something uh, concerning the strain relief. Um, the two screw terminals should be um, used with a Torx 20 screwdriver with a torque of 1.5 up to 1.8 Newton meters. So please make sure that you're using the right range. And uh, when it comes to the uh, DATCOM cable, there is also a specification. This is actually the um, older model. Maybe you have a uh, reseller which has got um, the ones from, from the inverters from 2016 still. Then you have to drill these holes by your own. Um, the new ones, of course, are coming already with this M32 screw um, terminal where you wire your cable through. So like as explained here in these pictures, the DATCOM cables, for example, can be wired here through this ceiling. Yeah? So please take out the ceiling. Then you have to take out these red plugs for each cable you are using. Put, leave the other ones back into place. That's very important. Put back the ceiling into these uh, yeah, M32 um, screw housing. And also, please make sure that you have got closed um, the M32 screw terminal here. So in order to have a proper sealed cable connection. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, even sometimes it happens that this this will be forgotten, yeah, because people think this is just a, um, a ceiling which I don't need, or maybe I just take out all of these red plugs here, even though for the holes which I don't need need to use for the cable, um, yeah, please use those ones only for the cables which you are really wiring through. Because otherwise, we have got problems with moisture into the connection area of the inverter, and this is really what has to be avoided. Another picture explaining how to wire the DATCOM cables inside of the inverters. can connect them here into the um, LAN ports of the inverter. Even though if, you, if you're not using uh, an inverter with a wireless connection, of course. The DATCOM cover has got a different cover, as I said in the beginning. This is different from the rest of the inverter. This is a metal cover, of course, and the DATCOM area's uh, cover is made of synthetic plastic. So please make sure that you put back the screws on the DATCOM cover. Make sure that they are even from when you look from the top of the inverter down downwards. Then you shouldn't see here an uneven area. It should be even closed. Even though if you're putting pushing that with your thumb, then you hear a click noise, then you know this is properly sealed. Put back the screws then afterwards. And this is valid for the big ones, big uh, inverter housing. They are coming with four screws. Yeah, and this is an example uh, which I found uh, where an inverter was put on the pole without the pole mount uh, kit. Um, this was just um, used with these plastic um, um, cable collectors, and this is not a proper installation. Please try to avoid it because it can then fall off. Please use the proper um, pole mount kit for mounting the inverter to the pole. Yeah, very important. Please try to avoid these kinds of installations. 
This is an example which um, I've chosen where what, what can happen if you are not um, switching on the inverter with the DC breaker. Then um, here in this case, a very strong person put uh, tried to put back the inverter to the wall bracket, but it couldn't close because the DC breaker was switched on on. Then this metal plate won't fit into the DC breaker shaft uh, bar and it's not possible to close the inverter. Even though this person here, the installer, pushed really, really hard. So this um, was deformed. And the deformization here, um, due to this deformization, it was not possible to close the inverter proper to the wall breaker. And this is what is happening. Um, we had this metal plate in between the inverter and the wall bracket. So there was no proper connection between the inverter and the wall bracket um, and the power transmission here. This can get really, really hot. So this is very dangerous. Never do that. Yeah. So these are examples for the cable inlets, um, as I said, with the DATCOM cables. So here a person forgot to put back these um, red plugs into the M32 screw. And here it was forgotten even the to put back the M32 um, screw to the holder. So that's causing the moisture inside of the inverter. Even though this screw terminal um, will corrode, uh, this can also happen then that the display uh, is not visible because of the moisture inside of the inverter. Really not good. So to sum it up, um, important criteria doing the installation is please make sure that you um, choose the right mounting location um, by IP protection class 65 and 66. Inside is always good. Outside, please avoid direct sunlight. Fastening inverter to the wall bracket. Please make sure that it has got a proper connection. Use the right torque. If you're screwing Fronis inverters, or even though you're opening up them, maybe you're from a service partner and you are allowed to also um, exchange the inside comp uh, components, then this is even more important to use the right torque then. Yeah, the wall bracket is a set. Um, and the logging plate of the uh, DC breaker, make sure that the DC breaker is in off position. The cable fittings, yeah have a proper connection to the cables on the screw terminal. Make sure that you have got enough space um, of the cable inside of the screw terminal. And make sure that you are using the right torque when you are fastening your screw terminal. It's very important not to um, have too high um, uh, torque here because otherwise it can break. And if you have got too less torque, then it can happen that it's not a proper connection. DATCOM cover, as I said, make sure that there are the plugs inside and also the DATCOM cover is sealed properly on top of the inverter and then you're good to go. Even though maybe it can happen that the, uh, by direct sunlight, maybe or by heat, uh, the DATCOM cover is harmed, we are providing also a DATCOM cover upgrade kit. This is the article number for that one. So if you have got a defective DATCOM cover or maybe the ceiling is broken, always that. Please make sure that the ceiling is um, okay here. Then you can, this is actually the picture taking from the view from the top of the inverter to the bottom. So don't be confused by this picture. Then you can see here is a not, uh, it is not even to the housing of the inverter. Then you should shouldn't leave that inverter like this because then here it's obvious then that water can run inside of the inverter. If you have these cases, then you can order the upgrade kit. The new DATCOM covers are always coming with um, a special um, back plate on the, on the back side. So they are more stable, they are more solid now in order to have, yeah, a little bit more um, they are stronger and if you have got the old inverters you can order 
also these upgrade kits. Or even though the windings for the screws can be exchanged if you maybe have got problems with the, maybe they are broken already because you use the electrical tool without a proper torque, then you can also exchange these um, uh, windings. Yeah, and this is again um, the recommendation which you find with all of our .com covers now, um, which explains how to properly um, seal the .com cover on the inverter. Okay, I'm already done with this webinar content. Um, thank you very much for your attention. If you have got more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with our tech support hotline or your national tech support. Um, they will always be pleased to help you with your installations, of course. Um, I can invite you also to our trainings here in Austria or even to our other subsidiaries. Um, please make sure that you will be there and to learn about the proper installation of a Fronius inverter. I hope you could take in some information for you as well. Uh, we will send out this presentation tomorrow and uh, the site documents as well. And if you have got more questions, I would stay online right now in order to answer your questions in the chat room. So if you have got questions, you can write me right now and uh, I will make sure that I can answer your questions. Otherwise, enjoy the day. Thanks very much for your attention and hear you very soon. Yeah, Nice day and see you soon. Bye-bye.